If you've got solar panels and a battery with or without an electric vehicle, and you're wondering if you're on the best tariff to suit your usage, you'll definitely want to continue watching this video. Remarkably, E.ON have brought out another version of their next drive tariff. I'll show you what's new, if it's better than the previous V5 tariff, whether you should move on to V6, and how it compares to the best tariffs from Octopus and Tomato Energy. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, I released this video looking at E.ON's new solar boost tariff. This was supposed to be E.ON's solar and battery tariff to rival Octopus Flux and keep their next drive V5 tariff exclusively for EV owners. However, E.ON seemed to have completely undermined their own product, making it pretty much obsolete by releasing this new next drive version 6 tariff in the last few days. I'm so glad I spent all those hours on that video. So this is the new next drive V6 tariff landing page. You will notice straight away that they've done a full U-turn on making the next drive tariff an EV owners only tariff. I suspect E.ON may have gotten a lot of kickback or feedback that the solar boost tariff wasn't great. I mean, it didn't even make it onto their list of tariffs. It was almost like they were ashamed of it. Oh well, this is great news for solar and battery tariff owners without an EV. Although I don't believe anyone's actually been asked for proof that they have an EV whilst on this tariff. As before, this tariff is fixed for 12 months and there is no exit fee. So what about the rates then? These are the rates for the new Nextdrive V6 tariff on the right, with the V5 tariff rates on the left. Don't forget these rates are region specific and include VAT. So yes, if you live in the northern region like me, you're also getting stuffed up with a 72 pence per day standing charge. We can see that the peak rate has slightly increased from 23.36p to 24.75p per kilo hour. The off peak rate has stayed the same at 6.7p per kilo hour and the duration remains the same at 7 hours from midnight to 7am. I am actually quite surprised with all the talk of energy prices going up in April that E.ON has chosen to keep the off-peak rate and duration the same. I did wonder if they would increase the off-peak rate to maybe 6.9p per kilowatt hour as it was early last year or even reduce down the number of off-peak hours. I'm clearly glad they haven't. Unfortunately though that mammoth standing charge that I mentioned before is exactly the same. So should you move from V5 to V6? Well the peak rate is slightly higher so I'd say no. But what I would say is if you're on the V5 tariff and you don't have an EV, then I probably would move to V6. As we saw before, the V5 tariff was only for electric vehicles. What you don't want E.ON to do is to release a V7 tariff which is either more expensive or is again just for EV drivers, meaning you've missed the boat to join the V6 tariff. The other thing to consider is if you do move onto the V6 tariff, you'll be resetting that 12 month fix, meaning your rates are sorted for the next 12 months which in the current energy climate is nothing to be sniffed at. As before, export is via the next export exclusive V2 tariff and is 16.5p per kilowatt hour throughout the day and is again fixed for 12 months. If you've got your gas supply with E.ON an earlier version, you may just want to check that the gas unit hasn't changed before you initiate any switch to V6. You could ask them just to switch your electricity supply to V6 and keep your gas as it is, if it's cheaper and runs for some time yet. I've currently got my gas on a 12 month fix with Octopus. Okay, so how does it compare to the best offerings on the market? To compare apples with apples, I'll look at the following points. Off peak rate, off peak duration in hours, peak rate, daily standing charge, and the export rate. Importantly for all these tariff options, the off peak hours must apply to all electricity consumption rather than just charging an electric vehicle. And it goes without saying that these smart tariffs require a smart meter. We've already gone through the E.ON Next Drive V6 rates, so what about Octopus? Well, their best import tariff option is Intelligent Octopus Go. With Intelligent Octopus Go, you'll get an off-peak rate of 7p per kilo hour for at least 6 hours. This set off-peak time is from 11.30pm to 5.30am, and occasionally they will give you some extra hours during the day. The peak rate is slightly higher than E.ON, but there isn't much in it. The daily standing charge is slightly cheaper, the export rate is a fixed 15p per kilo hour, although unlike E.ON, this import and export mix is not fixed for 12 months and the rates could change. Okay, so lastly, Tomato Energy. Their best import tariff is the Tomato Lifestyle option. It's important to mention that to get the 6 hours of really cheap off-peak electricity at 5p per kilo hour from midnight to 6am, you need to have an EV. If you don't, you only get 5 hours from 1am to 6am. You also get a couple of two hour slots during the day of 14p per kilowatt hour or 15p per kilowatt hour if you don't have an EV. 
The peak rate is lower than both Eon and Octopus, but again, there isn't much in it. And if you've got solar panels and a battery, you're unlikely to be using much, if any, peak rate electricity. The standing charge is a draw dropping 44.99p per day, which absolutely smashes the offering from both Eon and Octopus. Its export rate is where it falls short though, only offering 7p per kilo hour. You can of course move your export to Scottish Power, who offer 12p per kilo hour, and you don't need to have your import with them. But it's just another company to deal with, and Scottish Power's customer service from experience, albeit years ago, is appalling. Like Eon, this tomato tariff is fixed for 12 months, and there are no exit fees. Okay, so now we know what the different tariffs look like, how do my numbers stack up? But before we get into crunching the numbers, over 90% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel. If you find them useful, then please do subscribe to the channel for free. It really does help keep me motivated to keep making videos just like this one. I'm going to compare Eon's Nextrive V6 with Intelligent Octopus Go and Tomato's Lifestyle Tariff. I've added all my details at the top and the import and export rates for each tariff. If you want to have a go at running your own numbers, I'll drop a link to this spreadsheet in the video description box below. And if it does look a bit overwhelming, I put together this walkthrough guide to help you. Now that we've got all the cells filled, click the Get Results button. You can see the next drive V6 tariff takes all the plaudits, boasting the highest total year savings, lowest payback time, and highest return on investment. The standing charges, however, are just under £10 more than Intelligent Octopus Go. Behind it in second place is the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, and in third place is Tomato Energy with the lowest total year savings, even with that £90-ish saving in standing charge. I did mention earlier in the video that if you wanted to go with Tomato Energy, one option would be to move your export to Scottish Power if you could face it. So let's change that export rate from 7p to 12p per kilo hour throughout the year, and get the results again. This brings the savings in line with Octopus Engie when taking into account that ridiculously low standing charge. But that good import and export rate from Eon keep it highest for the total year savings. Obviously, these are just my numbers. As we are net exporters, you can see that Eon's export rate of 16.5p per kilo hour is really important in helping us achieve decent yearly savings. If you're a net importer, then that 5p off peak rate with Tomato Engie should be pretty tempting. The other thing to bear in mind is that Eon's off-peak hours are more accessible, and there's more of them. We can stick some laundry on a timer to start at midnight before we go to bed, or jump in the electric shower and pop the kettle on all before 7am. This long, accessible off-peak period combined with our solar panels and battery has helped us achieve an off-peak consumption of around 98%, with our average price working out at around 7p per kilo hour, including VAT. And if you're thinking of joining Eon or Octopus, don't forget to check out our channel referral link to split £100 energy credit between you and the channel. Thank you in advance if you do sign up via the referral link. It really does help keep the channel going. I switched from Octopus to Eon around 8 months ago, and I have to say my experience has been largely excellent. If you do choose to switch to Eon, you'll be switched to their standard Nextflex tariff in the interim. This should only be for a couple of weeks, but can often be sooner. As you'll know from my first video sharing my experience on the Switch, it took a couple of weeks for us to get onto the next drive tariff, and I did kick up a fuss about this. But importantly, they backdated my consumption use, so I just carried on using the electricity as if I were on the next drive tariff, and therefore was an out of pocket. I get a monthly electricity bill, which is all the information I need, namely the average price per kilo hour. The Eon app isn't the best, but any other data I need, I can get from my Give Energy app or portal. If you've got an EV only, you can use other third party options such as Bright or Hugo to keep an eye on your data. You'll find that the direct debit amount that you sign up with is higher than you'll use. And after a few months, once they've been able to see this, you can request to be moved onto a variable direct debit, so you only get billed for what you actually use. My export switch from Octopus happened straight away. To sign up for export with Eon, you will need to complete a Smart Export Guarantee application form online. To do this, you'll need to have a valid MCS or FlexiOrd certificate, proof of address, a photo of your smart meter or export meter, schematic diagram, and DNO approval letter or email. Eon will create you a separate account to that of your import tariff. Payments are made quarterly, and to do this, I just take a time and date stamp picture of my actual export reading for my smart meter and email it to them. The payment is then made directly into my bank account within two weeks, but it's usually quicker. You'll need to make sure your bank details are up to date on your export account for this to happen. 
Over the last eight months, the feedback I've seen from other customers of Eon has definitely improved. And this is evidence with its Trustpilot score going up from 4.3 to 4.5. And during my time on the next drive tariff, the off-peak rate actually fell from 6.9p to 6.7p per kilowatt hour in October last year. I had plenty of reservations leaving Octopus for Eon, but I'd switch again. The numbers speak for themselves. So there we have it, the most competitive options for you lovely people with a combination of solar panels, a battery and or an EV. So what are your thoughts on all of this? I'd really love to know what you're doing in the comments section below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.